God the Father predetermined what he was going to do. He had a purpose for us, right? Then in the predestination, after predestination, it says whom he predestined, he did what? He also did what? Called. When did that take place? Mm-hmm. Okay. To to what? Salvation. So that's that's the call, the effectual call where he predestined in the past, in God's mind, we're already saved and glorified, right? right? right. But in experience, it hadn't happened until he did what? He called us. So he, if the effectual call means that now he's setting in motion what he has already predetermined. So he has called, he predetermined, he predestined, he called, and once he called us, that's the regeneration. Then what did he do? That's right. He called whom he called. These he also justified. And what is justification? We looked at that a couple of weeks ago. We are righteous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and I would I would say, I would suggest that this idea of justification goes along with regeneration. When he regenerates, it's instantaneous his justification. Two different works, but they're instantly applied to us. The Spirit of God say we're born of the Spirit, and in that moment of our new birth. We are justified. That is, we have legal standing in the presence of God the Father. Such that he no longer looks at us as criminals. And not enemies. We're no longer um, cosmic criminals, aliens. We are now children of God. What a wonderful place. In fact, Romans 5 says, therefore, being justified by faith, now we have what? Peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. So regeneration and justification, all of this happened in the past, in our past. In the moment, the moment again, we, um, we, we believed on Christ, we were regenerated, and the justification, that legal status became ours. So once he predetermined, he called, that is he effect, the effectual call, he, he applied what he predetermined, he saved us, regenerated, he justified, and all of that in his mind was done in the past. But then in, in our experience, the day, let me ask you this, um, just voluntarily share, when did you get saved? When did you get saved? What, what, give, give me a year. 1976. Anybody go beyond that? Further back? 1976. Sister Jane, 1973. Anybody go beyond that? 1965? Wow. Anybody go beyond that when you got saved? We, we got 1965. Do I hear once? Do I hear twice? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> once and once or twice. Do we hear twice? <laughs> 1965. Anybody beyond 1965 when you got saved? 1962. Wow. Do I hear? 1960. Anybody going back beyond 1962? Stop it. 58. Man, you don't look old enough to be born. You need to be saved in 50. You ought to cut that out, bro. You just want the record, don't you? 1958. God bless you. When you got saved, I was I was five years old. Yeah, lost sinner at five. When you were saved. 
Well, in 1958, not the, any, anybody go beyond that, back beyond 1958? Uh, I'm 55 and saved all my life. <laughs> <laughs> some, 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 I'm moving out of the way. Some, <laughs> some, <laughs> I love you, sis. I love you, sis. <laughs> God bless you. Oh, what, what? And, and if, if people do. What do they mean by that? I don't think they know better. They don't know better. They have what what are they? What are they saying? What are they saying? Okay, Christian family. Baptized, yeah, yeah. Church affiliation, good, good. So glad you brought that up. Yeah, very good. Well, we have a fifty-eight. Anybody back beyond that? Elder King. 73. Oh, Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise God. Wonderful. So we, we still have 58. He, amen. Thank the Lord. Welcome back, by the way. You 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 got that whole you you and Paulette have that Hawaiian glow. Amen. God bless you. You, you uh, worked on your vitamin D, looks like. Amen. Welcome back. Praise God. So 1958, the Lord saved Pastor William Benson. But in eternity past, he was predetermined. It was predetermined what God was going to do in his life. It was on the books. In fact, my wife and I, my wife and I, we were talking about the passage um, in Revelation. It says that, um, heard it on the radio, whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Question is, when were the names written in the Lamb's Book of Life? See that? Was it the day in 1958 you got saved? Oh, it was when it was predetermined. Our names were written. And it's interesting because in the book of Revelation, he threatens, and I, I don't quite understand it, but he threatens to remove names from the Lamb's Book of Life. If, if, uh, if, if they didn't change their behavior. I, I, I don't quite understand what's going on in, in God's mind in that. But the fact is, is that in, in his predestination, he determined, 1958, that God would save uh, Pastor William Benson. But the effectual call happened in what? 1958. Sister Joyce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. I see. I see. Oh, okay. 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 Well, in, in Scripture, though, in Scripture, we're, we're taught that we go astray from the womb, from the moment we're, from the womb, we're born in sin. From the moment we're conceived, we inherit the nature of sin. So we're born sinners. I mean, we come forth as sinners, lost. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. You teach people what you're taught, okay. and that's what my mom was taught. Excellent point. So, yeah, Excellent so. point, which is unfortunate. Exactly. She Be felt that she was telling us something mm -hmm. worthy mm -hmm. that we should know right. because that's what she was taught. Right. So that's why we can see so much confusion because that is so of true, people Joyce. being not taught the correct thing. Excellent point. Excellent point. Exactly right. So glad you, you brought that up. Yeah, that uh, we're, we're born in sin, but uh, God had a plan for your life, Joyce, and Pastor, and our lives. He had a plan, unbeknownst to us, but we, our names were written, predestined, and then he called us. That's what's called the effectual call to regeneration and justification. But look at Romans 8 again, one more time. 
He also called, whom he called, he also justified. And, and I, I want you to know that, you, you know, the way it's written, it sounds like it's, it's um, steps, right? Right? Process. Sounds like in, in, the, in the mind of God. First, I'm going to, yeah, sequence, sequential in, in God's thinking. That in God's thinking, okay, I'm going to predestine, and then I'm going to call them, and then I'm going to regenerate or justify, and then I'm going to, um, what? Yeah, justify, and then I'm, I'm going to justify and glorify. But if you notice in all of those terms, what were you going to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the other word. That's right. Sanc then I'm I'm gonna regenerate them. Then I'm gonna justify them. Then I'm gonna sanctify them. And in the mind of God, the question is: Is that a process in His mind? Well, in the in the in the words there, and I think they're they're verbs. You see it in the past tense. Whom He predestined. When did that happen? Past. He also what? Called. When did that happen? In the past. In the mind of God, it was in the past. But in our experience, it was the day we got saved, right? But in the mind of God, it's in the past tense. We were called in, in God's mind. It happened in, in his experience in the past. Predestined, called, and whom he called, he what? Justified. In God's mind, when were we justified? In the past. Eternity past. In God's mind, when were we glorified? In eternity past. In fact, right now, as far as God is concerned, he sees all in an eternal present. God lives in an in, in eternal present. Everything is before him. So he, in his mind, um, predetermined, called, justified, glorified. But in our experience, we um, experience regeneration. And justification in, in a process, in a sequence. Um, in, in these two, by the way, are, are instantaneous. When you get saved, you're regenerated and justified instantaneous. Whereas sanctification, we're being saved. That's process oriented. We're, we're becoming like Christ. Paul says we're being conformed. In fact, Romans 12 says, don't be what? Conformed to the world, but be transformed. That's process. That's be being. Let, let this process happen in your life that you are being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. That's a process. But it is also absolutely accurate to say, I will be saved. And what is that talking about? That's talking about future, the promise. He has promised that we're going to look like his son. That's glorification, to be glorified in, a, in perfection. Look at this uh, again in Romans 8, we, we're reading, right? 8, 30. Uh, he also, I'm sorry, moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called, whom he called, these he also justified, whom he justified, these he also glorified. What does that look like? Look with me at 1 John. 1 John chapter 3, I think it is. First John chapter three. What does what does glorification look like? It's still somewhat um, in in our in our in our understanding. We don't have a full, perfect understanding of what glorification looks like, but we know generally what it looks like. First John chapter three. Who's going to read for us, please? Verse starting with verse one. And read all the way through verse three. First John, first John chapter three, verses one through three. Somebody read that, please. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. 
but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Amen. Everyone that has this hope, what hope? What's the hope? The hope in the being like Jesus. That's yes. right. Glorification. That's our hope. That one day we're going to be like him. And in light of that, everybody that has this hope does what? Purifies. It's this process, this process of dropping stuff off, cleaning up, doing a, a spiritual catharsis, cleansing, purifying ourselves so that we can become progressively like Jesus Christ. So we're in Christ, and he wants us to begin shedding off the, the, uh, the garbage and start looking like Christ. But I want you to see, once again, it says it, do, it does not yet appear what we shall be. See, it's, it's still somewhat foggy, vague, and uncertain exactly what that will look like. But John assures us, but we do know what? When he shall appear... We shall be like him. So whatever state Jesus is in, whatever he looks like, both um, uh, morally, ethically, and spiritually, in this state of glorification, we're going to be like him. It's not the likeness in the sense of we become, I've heard um, unfortunate teaching that says we become like God. We become God-like. Um, and that's not what John is in, indicating here. We're not going to become little gods. We're, we're going to become like him in a moral sense, in an ethical sense, in a spiritual sense. We will be, we will be uh, wonderfully redeemed. In fact, there, there's this, without sin, excellent point. And not only will we be without sin, we will be without sin but we will be without the ability to sin. We, we won't have the ability to sin. So that takes us beyond where Adam was. Adam was perfect, but he had within his, in his nature the capacity to sin. How do we know? God said, don't eat that fruit. God gave him a command. When we're glorified, don't need any more commands. Won't need any more law, right? Because we're perfected and we will no longer have the ability to sin. We're going to be like Jesus Christ in that sense, in a moral, in an ethical, spiritual sense, without the capacity. Whereas in, in Adam, we have the ability and we choose to sin out of nature, but also out of practice. But, but God's going to shut that down. Right now, we're, we're in the process of managing the sin nature. But the day is coming when finally we will be free. That's why I say here, we will be saved. Saved from what? That sin nature. We're going to be saved, uh, removed from it. Sure. I'm going to say verse 9. Verse 9. Read that for us, please. It says, Whosoever is born of God mm. does not commit sin. Mm. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, mm -hmm. because he is born of God. Mm -hmm. Excellent mm -hmm. point. Excellent verse. John, in, in this verse, he that is born of God does not, the verb there, the verb, it indicates does not continue to practice sin. He's not living a life of habitual sin. In other words, indicating that something has changed. The, the, the normal life prior to Jesus Christ has been interrupted. Something has changed and altered our, our uh, tendency toward just habitually sinning without regard, not even thinking about it. We, don't, we didn't even have to think about it. it. It just happened, right? Well, the day comes when we get saved and regenerated. He that is born of God does not continue to do what? Practice, Practice sin. Now, I know the King James um, Version. Is that the new King James? Uh, this, is King, this is the King James. Mm -hmm. The King James Version 
Um, but again, the verb itself, in, if, if you saw it, if you see it, in some translations, I think it picks up this idea of practicing ongoing sin. So when, when people say to you, and, and you know what, um, uh, you, you're just running to this response in, in, in people when you're sharing Jesus Christ and you're, you're telling them about uh, the, the, the glories of Christ and how he can save us. And it has happened, I don't know how many times, where people who are, um, for instance, under, um, uh, I guess, under conviction, a sense of conviction of sin, they know that they have fallen short. And they acknowledge that. The, it, it indicates that something has happened in them. And that yet they're not living as they ought to be living, but they acknowledge, you know what, I have fallen so short of the glory of God. See, that sounds like a believer. Whereas others who have no regard for sin, and yet they'll say quite readily, oh, I love God. That's what John says. If a man says he loves God and, and continues in to practice sin, he's a liar. See, it's the idea. John says that's why he came. To break that habit, to break that pattern, to break that lifestyle. So, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Um, so it's a process. It's not perfection. It's not talking about perfection. He who is born of God never, ever commits sin again. That's not what it's talking about. It's not talking about perfection. Perfection is where we're glorified. But it's talking about the idea of uh, sanctification in that verse. He's not continuing to practice sin. And yet we fall short. But it's not a daily routine where we're just disregarding the, uh, the mind of the Spirit of God. If we live like that, the tendency is, uh, the likelihood is that we're, we're not regenerated. See, the idea of regeneration means now we have a, a new mind. And, and our pattern of life now is to please God. And that's, that's what uh, First John is talking about. We're not sinless, but not we sinless. sin less. Good. Good. We're not sinless, but we're we're, we're sinning less, right? Right. I I, I think uh, too. If you you're in First John, look at First John chapter. Uh, look at First John chapter one, because I think John um, he's trying to make a distinction between this idea of of how believers relate to sin and non-believers. It's different. Look at First uh, John chapter 1. And these are the kinds of discussions that we're having with new members who come into the Man of Bible. We want them to understand what, how we, uh, what we understand relative. This is our statement of faith regarding this process of salvation, what that looks like. This is the message. I'm in verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from him, and I would say that would be Jesus. And we declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness if we say, that we have fellowship with him and continue to walk in darkness. See, what is that? That's a pattern. That's practice. That's practicing. See, if we say, and, and you know, people say, people say, oh, I'm, I know God, but they're continuing to walk. They're walking in darkness. What does John say? John says we lie and we do not do what? Practice. We're not practicing the truth. See that? But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Look at verse 8. If we say that we have no sin. See, this, is per this, this idea of perfectionism, that's not what we're saying, right? That we're perfect. In that verse you read, we're not saying we're perfect. Well, John says, if we say, you know what? I don't sin anymore. I'm perfect. Well, John says we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, see, here, here it is. We do fall short. Yeah. But he says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The idea of confession, it's, it's the word, it, it means to agree with God. Yeah. If we agree with God, that we have sinned. So every time, I love the way Pastor Brown would say this, keep short accounts with God, right? Uh, don't, don't go to the uh, store and, and run your bill up. 
charging, just charging, just charging, just charging. And before long, you've got this long, and you, you just completely, we just completely forget what's on, what's on the account. John, Pastor Brown would say, keep short accounts. Don't, you know, don't, 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 don't make a, a, a long list. I mean, if, if you know you fall short, confess it and forsake it. The, the word is agree with God. The idea of agreement means simply this. If God says it is, it's a sin, guess what? It's not. It's not a mistake. <laughs> what does he call it? What did God call it? It's a sin. I think we, we get into this habit of euphemizing, minimizing the value of violating the will of God. We call it by another name. In fact, the world does that. The yeah. world is famous for this. What, 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 what do we call? We call uh, the killing of a baby. We call that what? A woman's right. We, we shift, we shift the, the whole idea away from murder to the idea, the discussion of a woman's right. See, that, that's, that's, that's what the world does to cover right. sin. Mm -hmm. And God says, if we confess, agree with me, it's not a mistake. It's not a oops. Oh, I didn't mean to. And, and, and God says, no, call it what it is. It's a sin, David. And in the Bible, I'm sorry, sure. Go ahead. And the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. To do what? Forgive us. Forgive us. He lifts that. That's what forgiven means. It, it means to be, in, in fact, in the Hebrew, this idea of, of where the uh, on the Day of Atonement, it would be lifted off. Nasa, to lift off of you. What, what, what a freeing reality that we have. That in Jesus Christ, he lifts the burden of the shame, the, 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 the stench and the weight of our sin, and he lifts it off of us, yeah. puts it on his son, and essentially saying to us, don't carry that thing. See, when we're not confessing sin, you're carrying the weight of your sin, the guilt, the shame, all of it, and guess what it does? It, whether we, we are aware of it or not, it weighs in our spirit. Many a person today can, can become sickly, emotional, depressive, Simply because they're not in right relationship with God, not confessing sin. He says if we confess it, he's faithful and just to forgive us, forgives us, and then he does what? Cleanses, Cleanses us. The word there, that, that uh, Greek word comes into our English language, it, it's this idea of, of a catharsis. He performs an internal cleansing, a catharsis of our spirit, from that sin. Sin affects our emotional and spiritual reality. And all of that stuff can, can affect and will affect and ultimately our physical body. Many a person, many a person is, is suffering, is suffering physically because they're depressed because of their sin. And think, think about what, what happens when we carry around anger. It, it does, it does. It, it just sets off the, what's called in, in our bodies, there's a sense of what's called equilibrium. Uh, um, 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 men, uh, I forgot the, the medical term. But this homeostasis, this balance, God has created the body and the mind, the spirit and the soul to know a, a homeostatic state where, where we're all, the spirit, the soul, the body, the mind, uh, the heart, all of that is in, 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 in harmony. But when, when sin comes in, all of this stuff gets disrupted, and before long, can't sleep. I don't know what's wrong. I can't sleep. I just can't seem to get myself together. What's going on? When was the last time, you know, David, you, you got on your knees, and you, you did business with God and, and acknowledged, you know what, Lord, I have sinned. See, that, that's what he's after with the child of God. Sure, Carolyn? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, we, we have, if we're not forgiving of other people, mm -hmm. God is not forgiving of us. That's, that's number one. Good. Now, can I pause you? Please don't forget your, 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 okay. your point. If we don't forgive people, 
God won't forgive us. Does that mean I'm going to hell now? What, so what, what, is, what is this idea of God forgiving me? Why do I need God's forgiveness? I'm thinking, and you, I might be wrong, that has to be part of the cleansing. Good. And the fellowship, right? right. So here, if we're not forgiving, right. our fellowship with the Father is right. interrupted. And I wonder, does, does, that, affect, that, does that affect our emotions? Oh, yeah. Will Good that time. affect our psyche, Good our time. thinking? You know, to be rejected by God, to feel... Distance from the far. Oh, it clearly it does, no doubt. I'm sorry, Colin, but I was but, just going to say mm -hmm. too that anger, that unforgiving spirit, yeah, really ends up entrapping the person. Wow. That needs to forgive somebody. How about that? The person that? that you think um who hurt you hurt you. <laughs> you think that you know they're kind of going off and live their life. Yeah. Die. Yeah. But when we are unforgiving mm -hmm. of other people. That stuff eats it does. It, your yeah. spirit. It does. And, 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 and you name even physically, mm -hmm. spiritually, mm -hmm. emotionally, that mm -hmm. stuff eats at you something fierce. That is the truth. And something else, I, I, mm -hmm. you know, we know as, um, and we talk about this because, you know, we're in fellowship as a family and mm -hmm. as a body. Mm -hmm. And people do say or do things hurtful. You know? Oh, yeah. We're and toxic. Course, yeah. We are. <laughs> right. Right. Sorry to but, admit. You know, and. Um, so sometimes people say, well, you know, you have to forgive that person, which is right. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, I, well, I don't know if I, I do feel like this. It's a process, I believe, in mm -hmm. forgetting. Mm -hmm. That's okay. why the book is okay. called Forgive and Forget. Okay. Because you are, you, you are duty bound to mm -hmm. forgive that person. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. sometimes the experience that you've mm -hmm. gone through emotionally, like mm -hmm. again, you're involved mm -hmm. emotionally. You need to pray about that thing. Yeah. And it is a process. Yeah. And I believe it does take time. Yeah. But you I believe you that's something that you need to continue mm -hmm. on and pray about, mm -hmm. you know, especially because God says we are to love it, one another. Yeah. And then we have to be careful of that. I, you know, you hear murder and murder coming up, but we don't realize mm -hmm. that even when we're talking about in the book about the tongue. Mm -hmm. We murder people with all the, the time. words. Yeah. With the tongue. We Kill murder the people spirit. all the time. Yeah. We think murder is stabbing somebody. Right. We kill, but yeah. we murder a yeah. lot. Death and life are in without, the power of the tongue. tongue. Yeah. You know, so yeah. um, we have to be real careful. Excellent. I mean, we really desperately need to be careful. That is so true. Yeah. And, and along with that, being in the Word, being in fellowship with the Father, right? Uh, we, we desperately need that. Yeah, for our well being. For our uh, wholeness, for our, our uh, I would even say for our own sanity's sake, you know, especially a, the child of God, we, we need, we need desperately need the fellowship of the Father. Sure, uh, she'll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there are times when a Christian can try to medicate mm. the effects wow. of that unforgiven sin. Mm. And so we medicate, we try to medicate within the boundaries mm -hmm. of looking safe. Mm. And then there are those who don't. Mm -hmm. um, so we have Christians who are still smoking marijuana. Okay, okay. You I have um, Christians who still mm -hmm. have um, problems with obesity because okay. a lot of times the comfort of food mm. medicates. Mm -hmm. They can it can look so natural mm -hmm. when it's really that sin mm -hmm. that we tend to medicate. Mm -hmm. It could even be occasional fornication. Wow! People tend to bring wow. in those things from the world mm -hmm. that medicated them. Mm -hmm. So they try to do it in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times you see Christians just, like you said, withering and mm -hmm. just can't seem to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Because, as Sister Crowley said, it is a process. Some people have been hurt so deeply mm -hmm. that it's hard getting out of that. But I do believe in my heart that the Bible says, if there first be a willing mm -hmm. mind, you can be so deep into a position or a whole that it takes time mm -hmm. to 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 even when you're crying out to to mm -hmm. to activate that thing in mm -hmm. your life 
and eventually God gives, we receive the grace and we can um, allow the Spirit of God to bring us out and come to that realization of confession, mm -hmm. receive it, face it, and move on with mm -hmm. our lives. But mm -hmm. I, in my travels and even with myself, I know that, you know, we, Pastor Brown used to say, you'd rather dig a ditch than to confess. Mm. And in that di ditch digging, we, we medicate. That's why we can dig it, because mm -hmm. we're medicating. Using it. something else. Something to, uh, to, to assuage soften the it, pain. euphemize, yeah, yeah. to yeah. keep me yeah. in this state to deal with it. But mm -hmm. glory be to God. You know, like I said, if there first be a willing mind, I, I can say this because I, mm -hmm. I myself, I think of myself and I think of those, if you're really um, discipling a person and listening to what they're mm -hmm. saying, you know, it's like they're saved, mm -hmm. but if you look at them, sometimes you yeah. don't think they are. Yeah. You know, but yeah. uh, it's it's a process, and I, and I do believe um, those who struggle, it's that willing mind. You know, Lord, I'm in this ditch. Mm -hmm. I know I got to get out of it. You know, just have mercy upon me. You know, yeah. and I think in time, His tenderness is He lifts us. Mm -hmm. He brings us out. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. That's why I, I always tell people when you see saints in, mm -hmm. in sin, sometimes it's not that they want to beat it. Right, right. It, it's just that it's, it's just a struggle. Because yeah. yeah. we just don't know where people have come from mm -hmm. and why they're holding on to mm -hmm. it, you know. But mm -hmm. by His grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> very good, very good, very good. This, uh, this idea is so. Um, even healing, I guess, uh, in the sense that we're talking about it, bringing it to the light of day. Whereas if you can imagine, and I think um, Sheila's alluding to it, and, and uh, Carolyn as well, this idea of uh, living in the shadows, you know, where saints can live in the shadow and, and never come out and, and deal with these infractions in, in our spirit. And we're hiding and, and we're portraying as if, I'm okay, and, and we'll, we'll say, how are you doing? Oh, praise the Lord, I'm fine. And yet yet so much is, is just out of, out of whack. It's just not right. And we're not being honest with ourselves. And the scripture encourages us even there. Confess your faults one to another that you may be what? Heal. It's, and, and I'm not just, just saying, you know, pick up the mic. And, you know, if I stood here and just went through my list. I'm not, that's, not what, that's not what James is talking about. But, but there, are, there are brothers. I'm, I am in, I am in, I, I have um, four accountability groups because I, I really do want men pouring in to my soul and spirit and who, who I expose, as it were, me. And they see me in my and, and, you know, with, with all of my, my faults, failures, and fickle, all of that. And, and we, we do this. We share in, in, that, in that context. And it is so, again, healing. It is so free. But I, I know the opposite of that, too, to be walking around as if everything is, is and it's just not. It's just not. And God, that's where God meets us. That's where he challenges us. That's, that's where he wants to do business with. And so that we're not, um, as I think it was Paul and James talk, um, talks about this idea of dissimulation, hypocrisy, uh, not, not being um, genuine and authentic. Our, this, this is the call of God for believers. And all of that is part of the, the sanctification process. I'm sorry, Shea. Transparent. Good word. Transparent. Hey, yeah, sure. That's, mm -hmm. that's getting back to was saying mm -hmm. this is part of the transformation process mm -hmm. uh, when we say be transformed mm -hmm. we are transformed when we confess mm -hmm. and when we you know God when God mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of all the unrighteous stuff that's in right us. right yeah right mm -hmm. talked about the facets of Christ and he likened it mm -hmm. to a a diamond with yeah, the little cuts the in it. Yeah. And I think each time we come to him and we mm -hmm. confess that thing and we he cleanses us, 
It's mm-hmm. just another cut mm-hmm. in it that mm-hmm. brightens mm-hmm. us as a mm-hmm. jewel and reflects mm-hmm. the face or the image of Christ Amen. in that area Amen. of our lives, Amen. in that facet Amen. of our lives. And it's just, mm-hmm. that's constantly going on. So you should just see little sparks of light coming yeah. from our lives yeah. from yeah. different areas yeah. in our lives that we eventually let him have and mm-hmm. let him occupy those heart wounds mm-hmm. And our life to be more and more conformed to mm-hmm. this image mm-hmm. and, and, and deepen our knowledge of him Amen. in the power of what he can do Amen. in our lives. Amen. Second Peter, add to your faith, right? We want to be always adding. And, and this idea is, is each, each of you who have commented have uh, indicated again the, the um, extraordinary struggle. Um, and, and I would it suggests courage to be transparent. It takes courage to be um, a believer in, in fellowship with God. It, it really does. Um, and and it's, it's a struggle. It, it is. So in the past, I have been saved from the power, the power of sin. I'm sorry, forgive me. Penalty. Forgive me. From the penalty of sin. So in the past, it's the penalty. See, the penalty of sin is death and separation from God. I've been saved from that. I'm no longer under condemnation. Those of us who are saved, the condemnation of God is past. The Bible says, um, John 5, Jesus said, uh, whoever uh, uh, believes on me um, shall have life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. We're no longer under the penalty. And so we're not suffering under the burden of one day the threat of God. That, that's just not our, 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 our state. So we've been saved from that. We are being saved. I am being saved from the what? The power of sin. The power of sin. That where, where sin, Paul says in Romans uh, 6, let not sin have dominion. See, sin seeks domit, wants to reign. That 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 sin nature, and in fact, in Romans eight, he says, will never ever submit itself to the authority of God. And Paul says, don't let that mentality be yours, where he reigns. That the power has been broken by by the Spirit of God in our lives, so we now can exercise our will, whereas before we were. Um, before we got saved, the will, just the, the ability, the desire, all of that just wasn't intact, wasn't in place. But now that we are saved, we have the, the power, the indwelling power of the Spirit of God to say no to sin. We've been saved in the past from the penalty. We're being saved in the present from the power of sin. This is true for all of us who are saved, every one of us. So the struggle goes on, and if you, if you, please don't live in in in, in the, a deluded um, reality where oh I don't have a struggle. <laughs> if, if, if you, Paul said, when I when I would do, it's it's just the reality. Just and it it's it's just the reality that we face as believers. But now that we have the spirit, it's manageable. Yeah. And, and so com- I, 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 um, ignoring it and, and as, acting, acting as if it, it's not there, that's not good. That's not healthy. Yeah. Acknowledge the struggle that you have. In fact, Paul says we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers. Uh, wickedness in high places. All of this is coming to bear on the spiritual person. You better be wrestling. <laughs> you better be in a battle. We're in a spiritual battle for our souls because you don't want to leave this world damaged, you know, in a state of damaged goods. You, 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 you want you want to leave because the Spirit of God, the, the Spirit of God has, I'm, excuse the metaphor, but um, has, has over our souls. Handle with care. That's, that's how we need to handle our souls, with a lot of care. But we don't want to go. You know how sometimes you get deliveries? I don't know how many times this happened, where UPS, they've dropped off packages, and the, the box is torn, dented, and inside, 
cracked. <laughs> you you got to call. Look, this stuff is damaged. See, a lot of saints are going into the presence of God damaged. Nice. Damaged. Oh, saved, no doubt. But damaged, carrying, carrying sinful tendencies, the power of sin just breaking their will, breaking their soul, and that's not where he wants us to live. We are being saved from that power. But in the future, hallelujah, we what? We'll be saved from the what? Presence. The presence. The presence of sin. And, and that's, that's all of that's a process that um, God has started. And he determined that in eternity past. Father, we give you glory um, for the marvelous work that you've started in us. He who hath begun a good work in us, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And we yearn for the day. God, we yearn for that moment when we indeed shall see you face to face and be like you. Thank you so much for these precious saints, oh God, who are in pursuit of that day and want to be gloriously transformed into your image. I pray that your presence, O oh God, would be made known um, throughout this day as we seek to glorify you through your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. God bless you, saints. Enjoy your fellowship.